How's it going everyone? This is Alec and today... Today is raining again. But anyways, we are going to visit a charming town of Ga Sadrit. It's a medium-sized Telvanni town on the island south of Port Telvanis. However, bear in mind that Tamriel rebuilds medium-sized towns are still large compared to vanilla ones. So obviously, once again, we are in Morrowind's mainland, provided to us by this wonderful project, Tamriel Rebuilt. Ga Sadrit means Great Mushroom in Dunmeri, and I'd say it fits the image. But seriously, place is rather nice if you're a fan of rain, and then some more rain. You're gonna absolutely love it. It has all the rain you ever wanted. What brings you here, friend? But the real reason why we're here, besides rain, is a really, really, really fun quest that I discovered only recently. Quest is so dense and full of stuff that I had to make a video about it. And I hope you guys are gonna like it too, so let's just begin. I hope you won't take too much of my time. First portion of this quest is all about investigation and detective work, which I always loved. And the second half is, you guess it right, absolute mayhem. You see, Ga Sadrit has a secret, a terrible dark secret. You shouldn't be here. Oh, I'm shaking, Mr. Blue Plates. But seriously, this creepy Breton has nothing to do with it, or does he? Apparently, there is an evil cult of Daedra worshippers running around, too wild even for Telvanni, and asking people around will eventually reveal that there are indeed rumors of Mehrun's Dagon's cultists hiding somewhere in the Telvanni Isles. And if there are evil Daedra worshippers around, who are you gonna call? Witch hunters! And apparently there are some of them already in the town. So let's go and meet this couple of hardened, tough witch hunters staying at a local whetstone tavern. Oh, must be these two standing right there. Oh, they pose as drunk Nord miners. Clever disguise. Seen any got the better of me, <laughs> so go ahead. Nah, definitely not them. Witch hunters we are looking for are these two fine Dunmer gentlemen. Eranil and Aurelis, employed by the temple. Aurelis is a crusader and more of a muscle working in the destruction department. I'm so hungry, I could eat a rat. While Eranil is a true witch hunter and does the investigation part. And they're here in Ga Sadrit because they suspect a foul worship among the Telvanni. Specifically, they suspect that some of the Altmer surrounding Mistress Eldale, a local Telvanni lord, practices necromancy, or maybe even something worse. And of course, it will turn out to be worse. Much worse. Now, there's a whole another plot surrounding Mistress Eldale and Telvanni politics, but we won't get into it right now because it's not really related to our questline. However, it could provide an answer as to why would a renegade cult operate right here as Mistress Eldale is also an Altmer. And maybe she doesn't really care about necromancy and provides some, let's say, freedom for dark practices to her closest associates. In any case, if our disposition is high enough, Aranil will name a couple of suspects and that will be it. And I should say right away that having a high disposition towards several characters included in this quest is a requirement. They really have to like you. So be ready to either bribe or fortify personality any way possible, unless of course your character is charismatic enough. So it's time to leave the tavern and yep, still raining. Now we can talk to the suspects such as Ilvan. But it would be of no help. Do you want something? I mean, especially Ilven, a high level spell sword. Come on, does he really look like a foul Daedra worshipper to you? So, what's our next step? Well, here comes the fun part. You see, there is another quest that runs parallel to this one. It's optional, meaning we don't have to do it in order to finish our current mission, but if we do both together, we will kinda complete the entire secret cult storyline and collect all the rewards. It feels right to do them both, so let's just do that. And for that, we're gonna visit the local market and meet Mjording the Barbarian. Ho, oh, Outlander! What's your pleasure? Standing there all desperate. You see, his fiance, a Breton healer called Melly, has been missing. And he will tell us a fairly long story of their travels from Dawnstar, how they met and all of that. But he will ask us to help him find Melly. And that's, I guess, what we do. Usually we help people around. And with that, we trigger the beginning of a separate quest. But in reality, these two quests work the best together. 
I really love this concept of having two or even more plots all entwined into a single overarching storyline. So it's time to talk to everyone. What may I do for you? Damn foreigners. And NPCs will provide different comments on Melly, but the guy we need to find is Millar Yantus, an alchemist who sold Melly some restore potions. And Millar will add that Melly was looking for a souvenir and that he suggested her to visit his mother because she was selling some antique necklace. So off we go to find Larnella Yantus in her home nearby. However, according to her story, she was in Porta Telvanis, so if anyone talked to Melly, it would be her husband, Fernel, who was home at the time. And luckily Fernel is also there, so let's ask him. And this is the point when uh, we finally feel like we're onto something. Finally some crack in this hard-boiled egg of a case. You see, Fernel will act very suspicious and even Larnell, his wife, will tell us about her husband's strange behaviors lately. He's been very jumpy and acting as if someone is watching him. An untidy tale comes to a sorry end. Hmm, I wonder. Anyways, Fernel will deny seeing Melly and will tell us to leave. But he's obviously lying. However, there isn't much we can do here right now, so again, time to leave and talk to more people. And by the way, this dinner, Liz, <laughs> looks very delicious. There are four seats available and only two of them. Maybe he should invite those hungry witch hunters over. I'm so hungry, I could eat a rat. My friend, you don't have to eat the rat. There's a tasty cooked ornada back at Fernals, and he might be involved in a cult. Sadly, there isn't an option for that, so let's move on. Anyways, now we need to investigate Fernal and the cause of his strange, paranoid behavior. I wanted really bad to ask this guard, but he literally kept ignoring me. But once you find a guard ready to talk, he will say that he is not interested in idle gossip. But if we are, we should talk to Redams. Apparently this Redam loves gossiping and talking about Fernal, so he might be our guy. I'm not busy now. What do you need? And luckily, Radam will give us another valuable clue. Apparently, he keeps seeing Fernil in Port Telvanis, a Telvani capital to the north of here, like regularly. But what's strange is that Yugil Netri, who operates a river strider, says that Fernil never uses his services. But if that's the case, then how is he traveling across the sea? Obviously, not by swimming. It's too dangerous. And the river strider is the only means of transportation between two cities. Oh well, there seems to be no end to this mystery. I talked to literally everyone in Gas Sadrit, and guess I'm stuck again. You know, I find this rain really inspiring. How about a relaxing walk on the beach? Sometimes it helps. Oh wait, what's this? A boat? Could that be... No way. Yes, way. This boat is exactly what we need to find. There's a strange amulet inside called Weird Amulet, with an enchantment of Demoralized Humanoid 100 points for 10 seconds. Now, I'll be honest, I'll never use Demoralized spells, so I have no idea what it actually does. I guess it demoralizes people? Hmm. But I know, maybe we can bring it to Aranil. Remember those guys? Hard-working witch hunters doing all the hard work of drinking must in the tavern? Maybe they just don't like all this beautiful, relaxing, atmospheric rain. No, but seriously, finding the amulet, the weird amulet, is the point when two quests finally overlap. This connects everything. The witch hunters investigating the secret cult and Mjording looking for Mali. Anyway, Aranil will identify the amulet as the one used by Mehun Dagon's cultist. It definitely belonged to Fernil, but now we gotta find out who gave it to him, as Fernil is obviously just being used as a pawn. We need to find a big fish, so Aranil will send us to ask local merchants. And one we need to talk to is Cabrint Dwen, because he is running a local jewelry shop. Make sure Cabrint really likes you before speaking and then he will recognize the weird amulet. He sold it to Gavisi Tala, although it was unenchanted back then. Alright, time to visit Gavisi Talas, found inside her home. She will admit to buying the amulet but will be scared to talk more unless, again, we raise her disposition. We will find out from Gavisi that it was, surprise surprise, Ilvin who paid her to buy the amulet after she accidentally saw him near Port Telvanis. And then he threatened to punish her with terrible magic if she ever speaks about it. And now we finally have a name and a proof of a cult leader. Well, what do you say, it was Ilvin all this time, and here I thought he's all sweet and innocent. 
Now we should first go back to our friendly neighbors, witch hunters, and let them know about Ilwen. Aranil will ask us to confront Ilwen and see if he opens up to us so we can accuse him of witchcraft. You know, at this point I'm also wondering if Aranil and Aralis aren't just some clowns messing with me. But it's okay, I'll let Rain wash away negative emotions. I get it, they don't want to scare him into hiding or running away too soon. Alright, I'll do it. Besides, this is when fun truly begins. You see, soon as we confront Ilwen, he will just let that mask slip and go full force villain. That idiot Gavisi Talos must have talked. Not even in Ga Sadrit, under protection of the Mistress Eldale, can one perform his service to Mehrun's Dagon without stirring up the commonry. No matter. The Breton bitch that Fernil kidnapped will be sacrificed to our lord very soon. Neither you nor that drunkard Mjording, who let his fiance be taken under his nose, nor even your inquisitive friends will stop us now. Soon I will be granted powers beyond your imagining. Come to Yashasmus and try to stop me if you can. Your deaths will only bring Dagon greater pleasure. And with this sweet departing words, Ilven will teleport right in front of us, I guess to Yashasmus to hang out with his edgy cultists. But it was nice of him to reveal the location. And you know, he kinda reminds me of Mankar Cameron, but since this is happening prior to Oblivion, I guess Ilven was Mankar Cameron before Mankar Cameron. I always loved straightforward, dramatic, overly confident villains and Ilven is just that. No subtlety, just a guy and his passion for evil and ultimate domination. Witch hunters will actually ask us to stay and let them do the job. But honestly, after all this detective work, who would miss a chance in a lifetime to confront a real, genuine cult of Mehrun's Dagon? Sounds like so much fun and it really is. And also, in my opinion, it's best to leave Mjording to wait back in the market, or else he will just end up dead. So let the fun begin. But first, a warning. Next part of this quest is really hard. It's fun, definitely, and rewarding, but it's not for low-level characters. Ilven alone is a level 46 spell sword, and there will be lots of high-level enemies to fight wearing high-level items. So be prepared. Alright, Yashasmus is very near Port Telvanis basically across the hill. I think I exited Port Alvanis on the wrong side through this long, weirdly romantic tunnel, but doesn't matter, it's still close. Oh look, another naked Nord in dire need of help. No time brother, gotta smash Dedra. And Yashasmus is a sight to behold, it's a unique structure because it's a blend of Telvani and the Daedric architecture. It's also well guarded, there will be Daedra outside including Dremora, but that's only the warming. And there isn't really much to say anymore as things are pretty straightforward. Our job is to eliminate literally everyone. Uh, maybe this was a wrong idea. Needless to say, all enemies found within are dangerous. Except for this Dremora high on whatever they're using back in Deadlands. But like I said, there's a whole variety of enemies. Bosmer archers, Redguard heavy armored warriors, axe-wielding Nord barbarians, and plenty of dumber witches and mages of all sorts. I really love the main shrine or citadel. It's epic in design, reminding me a lot of those Skyrim's huge interiors. It's not something you often see in Morrowind. And fully geared witch hunters will also be there and fight along. Again, everything is just so epic. And there's this menacing looking statue of Mehrun's Dagon with red glowing eyes. It's kinda hard to not fall under the spell of these beautiful red eyes. They're really... I mean, Lord Dagon shall walk Tamriel again and the world shall be remade. The new age shall rise from the ashes. And this high elf serving at the main altar is not Ilwen, he kinda fooled me for a moment. He has a ring of elfborn, with a constant effect of fortifying maximum magicka, worthy 12,000 septims. It's a really nice find. But altar has more goodies, lots of gems and a unique daedric weapon called anarchy. It's a two-hand spear with a constant effect of fortifying spear 25 points, strength 10 points, resist magicka 20% and a slight damage fatigue 1 to 5 points. It's a ridiculous piece of weapon, I love it, even though I don't really often use spears. But as soon as we pick it up, weapon will disappear and a powerful unique Dremora will appear behind us. 
this guy is some kind of a lord or protector of this shrine called Lord Drakwa Yashas. He's a level 32 Dramora, totally immune to normal weapons, has 20% reflect, uses a spell Firestorm that deals fire damage over time, and on top of that he uses that unique spear Anarchy with all of its benefits. Needless to say it's a tough hidden boss fight if you will. But with the advantage of a high ground, once we send him back to oblivion we can finally claim Daedric Spear Anarchy. And there are other areas to explore like flooded halls, but we need to go to the Pit of Sacrifice, through a door almost hidden halfway up the citadel. There will be another tough fight with interesting looking characters including a powerful sorcerer, Vilvan Nelvani, wearing this terrifying, unique, Daedric face of rebellion. And in the next, deepest and most wild area, we are finally confronting Kalt's leader, Ilvan. Before the fight, he will say the following. You come too late to save the Breton. The ritual of sacrifice has been performed. Soon her soul will be torn from her body and cast into oblivion. And now you die. Ilven will wear a full orcish armor and orcish longsword, but will mostly rely on spells. Once he's dead, we need to pick up a key laying next to a skill book, Realizations of Acrobacy, and run to Meli. She is inside one of those prison cages, and as soon as we set her free, she will cast a recall spell and return to Mjording. And with that, our Inquisition is done. Alright, that was fun. Now, I just wanna add that our allies, Aranil and Aurelis, can and will die fairly easily during the raid. And not because they're weak. It's just that we are fighting some really strong opponents, and there's plenty of them. So if we plan on keeping them alive, count that as yet another difficulty. And if alive, Aranil will thank us with the following words. Our job here is done. With their leader dead, the rest of the cultists will vanish in panic, without doubt. I will manage to cleanse the rest of the ruins and perform the exercising rituals myself. Thank you for your aid. Perhaps our paths will cross again sometime. Until then, take these items of my own production as a token of my gratitude. Be well. Aranil will gift us Mace of Deep Crushing, one-handed mace that fortifies blunt weapon 15 points for 30 seconds on strike and deals 5 to 10 points of damage health. It's actually a pretty neat weapon, has a cool name and is yet another unique, charming weapon I discovered in Tamriel Rebuilt. But Arnold will also give us a mirror shield. Now this one is really tricky. It looks like a heavy shield but is in fact a light one with a simple armor rating of 1. Its value is in the enchantment of constant effect of reflect for 50% on self which is crazy. Half of all damage done to us is reflected back. But as always there's a catch. You see it's called mirror shield for a reason as it has condition of only 30. It breaks super fast and requires constant repair. So I haven't thought of any smart way around this problem, but knowing Morrowind and how creative people out there can be, I'm pretty sure someone figured out the way around its weakness. But with that said, all we have left is going back to Ga Sadrit to pay a visit to Mjording and Meli. This is fortunate. How do you well, do, Well, here's a fine one. Speak me? freely. Now happily reunited. Luckily we can still find him in the market and Mjording will again be very very talkative. He won't have anything valuable to give but will tell us another story about a place where we can find a perfect sword. And what's funny there is an Altmer in Gas Sadrid who is obsessed with finding a perfect sword. But that is all a story for another time. Today we enjoyed a beach walk in rain, cleansed a Daedric ruin filled with powerful cultists, obtained some insane unique items, talked to many many people, oh and did I mention enjoying all this rain? And before we end the episode, let's take a quick look at all the loot I brought in from Yashasmus. So these are only the things I carried on myself. Daedric Face of Rebellion. This one is actually based on original concept art and it belongs to Dagon. I think they're all added by Tamriel Rebuilt, so I still need to find the rest of them. And this is the Ring of Elfborn, taken from High Elf Sorcerer. And these are the Boots of Peace. They're also taken from Jermola Lord. They cost 40,000 septims. And look at all those constant effects. It's ridiculous. And they look very holy, ironically enough, since we found them in the shrine of Mehrun's Dagon on a Dremora. And they are heavy armor, so perfect fit for a knight or a paladin. 
And here's the mirror shield, that's the really tricky one. We also get to keep the weird amulet, might come in handy, who knows. And then there's Dajic Dagger, Dajic Broadsword, Orcish Halberd, Adamantium Saber, Anarchy, the truly unique prize one, bunch of Dwarven Blades and Spear. As for the armors, I kept Drag Boots and Greaves and Ebony Helmet. And there's plenty of gemstones, scrolls, books, even human flesh for all the weirdos who are into collecting those kind of things. All in all, this was a really really fun one. Again, it had all those elements that I enjoy so much. Detective work, fun quirky characters, epic locations, unique items, rewards, boss fights, secret boss fights, love story, and the fact that there are two parallel storylines. I definitely want to see more of that. And honestly, I'd love to see Aranil and Arellis again. Even Aranil said that we may cross our paths again, which could be a hint for that or maybe just a generic goodbye, who knows. But for us, who actually cared about these two witch hunters and took that extra effort in keeping them alive, I'd love to meet them again in some other place with some other investigation. And wouldn't that be fun? Tamriel Rebuilds offers a large epic land for us to explore and finding some of the old characters in new stories would make the land feel so much alive. At least that's my opinion. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoy today's video, take care and I'll see you soon. Seen any any the better of me, so go ahead.